Hey, everybody, here with Ludacris, a.k.a. Chris Bridges. We're talking all about his career, Fast and Furious, how he's currently writing his music and what mode he's in. Of course, his incredibly popular show on Netflix, Karma's World. What else, Chris? Well, also my Afro and how spirit it is, and because I'm a Virgo, <laughs> so it needs to be kind of perfect, but we'll get to that. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right, guys, don't forget to hit subscribe. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. All right, friends, we have a very special episode for you today on Better Together with Maria Menounos, our friend Ludacris, a.k.a. Chris Bridges. Oh, my God, I love I him. I wish I could keep playing oh, it. Oh, it's so good. Okay, <laughs> YouTube only allows us to play a little bit. But, um, yeah, he's amazing. He's on the show today. Really excited. We're going to be chatting with him all about his season two renewal of his hit Netflix show, Karma's World, a show that he based off his oldest daughter, Karma. Really exciting uh, day for us. I saw when... Actually, this was the cutest thing. So here it is. It's Kelsey's birthday. And she books Ludacris through our lovely friends at Central Talent. And uh, and she goes, oh my God, we have Ludacris. And she's so giddy. And it just makes me so happy that you- I'm so excited. You love this show that much. And you love when we have, you know, it could be Ludacris or it could be Dr. Joe Dispenza. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You get so excited, but you definitely got a little extra excited oh, for Luda. extra excited. I, I love Luda. Like, I didn't know that you love Luda. Yes, I love Luda. Honestly, this is probably not something you know about me, but my favorite genre of music is rap. I like love rap. Love. Rap. I don't know if any rap fan has ever said my favorite genre of music I, I is think rap. They have. <laughs> I think that's true. Oh, I don't know why everything so has cute. to come back to shaming me, Maria. I think it's so funny, Pooja. No. Pooja, please tell me you didn't think the same thing. Can you hear me? Oh, you can yeah. hear me. I'm not commenting. <laughs> <laughs> well, she kind of want to add no, to the but shame. I'm but I'm just that's saying funny. whether no, or no. not they say it. But you know I what? Love rap. I I call bullshit. Why? Because I spent months with you, five months, and I never heard you play one rap song. I was, All I heard was, I was Harry Styles okay, and you this like boy use, band and that boy mm -mm, band. Mm -mm, not uh -huh. true. Because I was never DJ in the car. The only time I DJed was on a road trip. Mm -hmm. And we had to play One Direction because I had to use your Instagram to tag them all. And then they didn't even respond. And it was ridiculous. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's I find smart. this all suspect. Thank you. It was, it was Pooja, smart. <laughs> have you ever heard her play rap music? Honestly, when we would carpool before, she would. Thank you. She would. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When wow. she would drive. Thank you. Do you think she was afraid to share her <laughs> feelings of rap around me? Maybe I'm Maybe. scary. Okay. Also, side note, you know, you're not scary, but you know who else loves rap, which <laughs> makes me laugh? Jeff Graham. No way. Yeah, yeah. loves it. Oh loves my God. It. I want to lick, 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 lick <laughs> you from your head to <laughs> your toes. <laughs> he loves it. That's so funny. I know. So very excited. Was very excited about Luda. Oh, that's so cute. Well, I love Luda. I love rap. Um, I love all music, actually. I yeah. don't think there's a, a, a genre I'm not a fan of. But, not um, a fan of. Even country music. I like some country music, too. I love Shania, mm -hmm. if she uh, counts. I know. The mm -hmm. only thing with country music is that um, our dear friend, rest in peace, Trevor uh, Moad, talked about how depressing country music is. Yeah. And that always yeah. stuck with me because um, he did that test where he just listened to country music all day, all night, and he got super depressed. No way. I'd yeah. never heard this. Yeah, there were experiments. Oof. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough part of our living in Nashville. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> until we become um, country superstars, which this, is the ultimate goal, I, then you can't be depressed. This is true. And when you listen to this interview with Chris, you're going to see that being a rock star is the number one pursuit and number one job. And I think, Kelsey, we really should do it. Uh, girl, I am in. I am so in. Sign me up. What about the Better Together band? I know. And again, Why back not? to Jeffrey Graham. <clears throat> he also used to be in a band, so... Oh, we talked about this before. Yeah. I was going to do the Better Together yeah. band. I'd be the weakest link, but I'll be all about you the promo. You would not be the weakest link, no, though. You guys have incredible voices. I You have a good voice, though. I have a good voice. You do. Um, and Pooja used to play the cello. No yeah. way. Yeah, so we got to get I'll her in the it. cello. Wow. <laughs> way back in elementary school. <laughs> do we have video of this, Pooja? Probably. Please bring it in. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to get that up. Kelsey, Absolutely. do you have any recitals that we can play? Probably. I, I mean, honestly, though, my parents were always the ones where I was like, oh, my gosh, did you guys record that? My mom was like, yeah, the camera died. 
Like, mom, come Deb. on. I know. I know. That's so funny. I know. Well, you guys have seen my little attempts in school where I was chicken shit terrified, <laughs> but pushing myself yeah. to like get out of my fears. And I'm like, everything I do, and I'm like <laughs> barely moving my mouth. I'm so scared, but I did it. I did it. Um, all right, guys, without further ado, let's get on with the show. All right. Today we are chatting with the multi-talented Ludacris, a.k.a. Chris Bridges, who has had a remarkable career as a recording artist. He sold more than 24 million albums worldwide and solidified himself as one of music's premier entertainers. Luda's also made a seamless transition into acting, starring in many movies. But the biggest, of course, and the one I've seen you most on, the Fast and Furious franchise. His philanthropic efforts rival his entertainment accomplishments. He started the Ludacris Foundation in 2001, which focuses on helping the youth in his hometown of Atlanta. But Bridges' most important role is being the ultimate girl dad to his four girls. Today, we are getting into the animated series he created called Karma's World, based on his oldest daughter, Karma. Better Together is welcome, is very excited to welcome Ludacris. How hello, are you? hello. One of my favorite people that I get to see all the time throughout all of the things that you mentioned. So, so what's crazy. Going on? Hi, Happy friend. Such oh, a good. journey. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm loving the ride as much as everybody else is, but you know, these are good problems to have. Too much going on. I know. Well, it's funny because I was telling the girls. I remember like my biggest, strongest, like maybe music memory was you at the VMAs. What year was it, Kelsey? 2002. 2002 when you came down the street. It was my first, I think one of my first red carpets I ever did. <laughs> and I was losing my mind because I was such a big <laughs> fan. I loved your music. And we were just like, this is the greatest entrance, the greatest performance ever. Man, that means the world to me. I, I, I remember a lot of those red carpets, but I did not know that that one was one of your first ones being able to interview people. So that's great. Yeah, it was so cool. We were pulling up the clip this morning and I was like, oh, man. Um, and then, of course, I've been on the fast journey with you guys on different yeah. sets and you guys are getting ready to shoot Fast 10. How crazy is that? Extremely crazy, because as I've told you before, I had no idea we would take it this far. I was in two and I was happy enough to be a part of that and then to come back in five as a complete surprise is great and then you have this six and then seven and then eight and then nine and now ten i mean listen i i think i'm the luckiest person in the world to be able to balance you know music and movies and it's just like to be able to kind of go back and forth and I, i'm just i always say i'm a lucky person man very very lucky uh, what's your sign virgo Oh, interesting. Virgo. So is it in your chart that you're lucky, I wonder? You no, know, you know, when hard work meets uh, preparation, that's really what luck is. So I, it's go. a lot of hard work behind the scenes. But, you know, I never take anything for granted. And um, I'm just very thankful and very humble for all the support from everyone all these years. It's the only thing that keeps me this lucky. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I was, uh, was really impressed actually, cause your, your gratitude and your humility is a really, um, big key, I think in, in the success and it actually attracts more success. So there you go. Um, hey. because when I was watching you talk about karma and anytime someone threw anything congratulatory your way, you were so quick to say, wait, but it's not just me. There's an entire team behind this that works so hard and I really want to make sure I honor them. And it was like interview after interview that I watched and I saw this and I said, wow, what a beautiful way to, to be, but also what a great way to show people how to be too. 100%. I and, you know, that, that that means the world to me because there are so many up and coming people that that I feel need their just do and they, they need their um, their flowers as well. You know, the people behind the scenes work just as hard, if not harder than the ones that are on camera. Yeah, so I, always, I always make note of that. And just, you know, I just want people to get their flowers. OK, so before we get into karma, because I'm very excited to talk about that, I do have to ask. When I was getting ready to do the Fast 9 trailer launch with you guys in Miami, 
I remember going into Universal and they were showing me, you know, some images and things like that. And I said, well, where are we going to go next? I mean, I haven't seen this one, obviously, but like, I feel like the only place left to go is like the moon. And then I saw the movie and you guys went to the moon and I'm like, oh my God. So now where do you go next? I mean, are you guys going to go to Mars? Like where can the franchise go? Listen, that's such a good question. And to be again, humble, I, I literally get the script and I look through and I'm wondering where else can we go? And then I read it and I'm like, we've done it again. Like whoever is helping to like, it's such a great team of people that's coming up with all these ideas. Every time somebody asks, where can we go from here? They find where we go from there. And and this time around, I can honestly say I don't have the script yet, but I guarantee it's going to happen again. Very soon. So fun. Can you say where you guys are filming yet? Um, uh, It's already been put out there. I think Ben already said we'll be in London and some other places that are a surprise, but we'll be shooting in London. Oh, cool. Okay. I feel like that's yeah, been a base man. before. Right. Um, well, I'm very excited for Fast 10. I hear that's kind of maybe the last one. Yeah, 10. 10 is supposed to be the last one. And, and it might be... Well, let me not give anything away. But yes, 10 is the last one. Sorry, sorry. So, I almost, I almost <laughs> slipped. <laughs> so here's the thing. When you've been a part of a franchise like this and a family like this, do you feel sad that it's going to come to an end? Are you excited for new things? How do you kind of handle those emotions? I am so, I'm probably one of the characters that is going to tell you, I am hundred percent just being honest with you. I am not sad that it's coming to an end because I, like I said, I was already happy and thankful to be in one. And we have so far you know, we've gone so far outside of the realm of what I felt like I was going to be able to, to be a part of. And I'm so, so forever thankful. I mean, I'm trying to find the words here. Yes, there will be a little, I'm, I miss my family, but I think there are new things. But if you're asking me, am I, ha- am I, am I sad that it's coming to an end? No, I'm happy for all the ones that we did. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. If there's, <clears throat> if I was to look at your phone, who do you communicate with the most offshoots? Oh, Vin, believe it or not, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Vin, all the time, man. And um, man, he, he, I've said this before, and you know this, this man, the, the general public might not realize it to this capacity, but he eats, sleeps, breathes Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, which is funny because I'll never forget when they asked him to come back. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is after he had said no. And I was yeah. in my kitchen in Van Nuys and he's like, what do I do? And I'm like, you got to do it. You've got to go back. And I was right, so right. enthusiastic. He's like, OK, he's like, all right. And I was like, I'm serious. This is your thing. <laughs> and um, yeah. and so, yeah, and to see where it's gone from there. Obviously, he is, uh, has been a huge, huge, huge part of this going 100%. as long as it has. 100%. But yeah, that's definitely who I communicate the most. Our daughters, our youngest daughters are like best friends. Aww. I well, know. Not that youngest. was the I other just, thing. I just have, I'm sorry. Let me clarify that. I have a seven-month-old now, but my second to youngest and his youngest. So Pauline and Cadence are like best friends. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Um, but what's crazy <laughs> is to see all of you blossom and have families. Um, I remember at the last fast premiere, fast nine, your wife was pregnant with your now, was it seven month old chance? Yep. Yep. Chance. You got it. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to have that experience. And you know, you are a girl dad. So I have to ask, what is it like being a girl dad? Man, it's, it's tough because <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to be too strict with them. They they all melt my heart. Whenever they ask for something with the puppy eyes, I, I just cave in. So it's difficult for a dad. But at the same time, it's also difficult because Karma's World is based off my oldest and all the rest of my children are saying, where is our show on Netflix? Because Karma has her. So what, what's going on here? What are oh we doing? Oh my God, that's so funny. So Kelsey, my producer who's in the booth right now, when we were talking <laughs> about the interview, she goes, I mean, honestly, if I was his other girls, I'd be like, where's my show? I'd be pissed. <laughs> Listen, I'd be pissed. You hit the nail on the head. She got it. They're like, so what? And they keep asking. So I'm like, 
I don't have the answers right now that, that I need to give them. But for the most part, it's great because girls, they take care of their parents as they get older. Boys, eh, not so much. So I'm going to be well taken care of when I get older. I got four girls that's going to shower me with as much love as I'm giving them right now. That is so funny. Well, it took you 14 years to get karma to Netflix. So you got to tell all of them they got to have patience. I'm thinking about every Guns <laughs> right. N' Roses song right now. Isn't it 14 years was another song and patience was another? Start cueing yeah. the Guns N' Roses songs to them and be like, got to have patience. Yeah. They don't quite understand yet that it's taking me longer than the time they've been on this earth to make this show. So, it, you know, I'm trying to get that through to them. It hasn't, it hasn't quite clicked yet. Yeah. Well, tell me what, I mean, obviously season one was super successful for them to bring back season two, which comes out um, March 10th, um, is a huge feat, right? So, So what is that like for you guys? And is there more pressure on you right now? Man, like bring all the pressure on. I'm so confident in myself and my team with this show. And, you know, it doesn't help that we got these NAACP nominations and number 10 in over 42 countries. Right now, we can only expand and get better. And I, I just know what episodes we have coming. And on March 10th, like you said, they'll be able to watch season two on Netflix. And they can still watch season two, season one right now. But I, th- I just feel like we're growing and we're, the fan base is increasing. If you look at social media, kids are dressing up like karma, rapping like karma. And that is the goal because there's so much positive uh, influence and so much positive, so many positive stories and they're having an impact. And that was my goal in making this show all along. Yeah. I mean, there could be probably no better feeling, right? Oh, my gosh. You think about everything that I've done in my life and you think about you know, leaving legacy and what we're going to leave behind and doing this and seeing kids impacted in a positive way. And we all know we need more positivity in the world today. Mm -hmm. So being the change that I want to see in the world, there's no greater feeling, period. So cool. I saw the episode with, um, and I love hearing you. I'm like seeing you. I love hearing you in there. Um, playing the dad. Yeah, I play the dad. I play the dad. Yeah. And what I think is so cool was like there was a conversation where she was Karma was really sad about her name because she thought it was weird and she was getting made fun of in school. And I thought, what a great topic to cover on the show because names are a really really tough thing growing up. And yep. I remember my cousins because we're Greek all had these super ethnic names and they were made fun of so intensely. And I was lucky, let's say, because my name was just Maria. It was, it was very international. It could have been anything. And my, my cousins and my brother, everybody got tortured. And when the teacher doesn't know how to say the name, it adds so much to the, you know, to the, the fodder. So I thought that was such a really cool, um, Cool topic because the way you explained it to her, like it's, it actually makes you unique. And that's why when you were so special, when you came out, I, I, it melted me so much. And I, and I, I wonder where are these storylines coming from? Are you sitting with everyone and saying, here are some things in real life that, um, I've had conversations about. And then you turn that into an episode. Yeah. Such a good question. And I was going to tell you, these episodes are based off of real things that happen mm-hmm. to karma. You know, you sometimes you hear based on a true story. No, these were like almost exact to the point of the conversation I had and things that happened to her, even the episode with her hair. So I think that's why people are resonating with this show so much, because they're based on true stories. And, yeah. and we know that other girls and other children are going through the same things. And that's what makes Karma's World Netflix so special. Aww, so cool. Was there <laughs> anything that Karma was like off limits, dad? <laughs> no, because during that time frame, it's just like she knows that she's older now and she's perfectly fine with being vulnerable. Maybe at that time she might have been like, you know, I don't want to do this. But since it's 14 years later, she's like, oh, you're talking about stuff that happened when I was like six? Yeah, go Tell all of that stuff. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. And how involved is Karma? Karma is, she's focused more on school now, but I do, she consults with every single thing that I do. I send her pictures of sketches and, you know, she listens to the music. So it's great to have her involvement. But in terms of the day to day, she's kind of just lent us her name and her likeness and her stories. Yeah. 
And and what does she feel about all of this? Like how what is her reaction to all of it? Listen, it's so surreal to her. I don't even know. She's still in awe, but I do think that, and I'm gonna hear just a little spoiler alert, and maybe you know this, but we have a Mattel Karma's World doll coming out this summer. And I think that when this physical doll comes out, it's probably gonna hit Karma way harder than it has uh, up until that point. Yeah, I saw like something on your through. Instagram where it said Mattel, and I was like, oop, <laughs> I think something's coming. Yeah, it's pretty serious. I mean, I, that's that's what I'm I'm glowing about that because, like I said, you know, the, like my, all my daughters grow up playing with dolls, and, you know, we go to Target or we go to Walmart all the time, but for them to walk into there and to be able to see, this is going to be the joy of my life. Yeah. Was there anything in designing that line that um, came up that is interesting or anything that you really wanted to make sure was yes, translated? Yes, that's, listen, you ask such great questions that, that no one else asks. That's why you do what you do. Thank you, friend. Big, but I can give you uh, that there was, that Mattel hired specifically a person to do the black hair on the doll to make it authentic. A specific person hired to make authentic, real, like to make it as real as possible on the doll. So that shows you how involved and how much Mattel cares about like the inclusivity and about celebrating black culture and black hair. And so that is uh, amazing to me. Wow. I think um, I can see where Karma, because she's like, you know, she's in college now, right? Yep. She's in college. So I can see where her life is just kind of starting and she's not really probably feeling the intensity of what's kind of happening over here. But when she sees that doll with her name on it, definitely that's going to seal the deal. That's why I say 100 percent, 100 percent. And then, you know, she sees the kids that are on social media that are dressing up like mama, like I was saying, and dancing and singing the song. So she's halfway there just because of that. Yeah. And and tell everybody about the creative process for you, because you're doing a voice, you're making music. What else are you doing in this? Yeah, the, the music, um, you know, when we go through each character and their design and what they're going to wear and the colors and the behind the scenes of, you know, all the storylines and working with the team to make sure everything is right. We go through so many different passes of music because the music has to fit the episode, you know, specifically it has to be a specific amount of time. The production has to match the emotion. I mean, it's I'm full hands on. This is this is full throttle. Fun. So, how does that change? I'm trying to think of like the Luda music I know and love, and the involvement of Luda as a girl dad, as this creator of Karma. How does the new Luda get affected when he's making music? for him like when you're doing your music how are you now affected because you can't be progressing in this direction without progressing in that direction concurrently with yourself yeah great question so i'm not i don't do all the music on karma's world myself i have a team of people and i kind of oversee stuff but to your point yes i am still i know it's like it's almost like me being ludicrous on stage and then me being home with my kids and being Chris Bridges and being a father. I'm not singing move bitch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but that's what I was thinking about because I love that song. So my point is is like you're changing the game for young girls growing up, especially young black girls growing up. And you know, there's a there's an evolution. There's a higher vibration that comes with all of that. There's a responsibility that comes with that. So when you go to write new music and do your music, yeah. it's like, is there a conflict? Because there's a different creativity that's involved in that. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, it's it takes. It's such a such a great question because I'm in the I'm in the middle of it now, and I am creating new music, and it takes being mindful and not just thinking. Like, say, for instance. I'm not going to make a song called Holes in Different Area Codes because I'm a married <laughs> man and I'm not going to do that anymore. So it's, it's, it's the best way to answer this question is the only way people buy into your music is, is they feel your honesty and your passion and your truth. Mm. But honesty is the biggest thing. So as long as I'm finding what's truth, what's truthful to me that I know other people can identify with, then I will be OK because I can clearly make the difference between 
what I would help with with the children's space and what I would do as ludicrous. But the best thing about all of this is maybe this is me just trying to balance out the karma of me having a parental advisory sticker, but a bunch of kids <laughs> listening to Ludacris and telling parents, move, bitch, get out of the way. And now I'm putting into the universe some stuff that could actually be positive for that age group, but I can still be me in the other sense. So um, it's it's multidimensional. But uh, to answer your question, it just takes more thought. It takes more, as, as an artist, we continue to reinvent ourselves. We have to say, what can we do that we haven't done before? And now it's just like, OK, here's another realm. I have to be mindful that I'm also doing this. So what is my new truth? That's what it is. Oh, I love that. And I'm obsessed with that because, listen, we're not the same people. And right. as we're growing in years, we're hopefully growing in maturity in ourselves in you know, evolving. And and so. I like hearing that um, as an artist, it's about what your truth is now and, and making music from that place. And yeah, your truth now is you are a girl dad. And so it's it's kind of a different thing, but I still worship all of that music and I play it. By the way, you're my Super Bowl king. So Meredith and I, my friend who go to the Super Bowl together every year, there's not one Super Bowl where we're not getting ready or in the car or all the in-betweens to you and that album. <laughs> I love that. That's what I made it for, man. The fact that I have music that's like permanently ingrained in certain cultures and, and sports arenas mm -hmm. is, again, why I keep saying I feel like I'm the luckiest entertainer in the world. Yeah. Like how many people get to, you know, take a break from music and go shoot these franchise movies that have grossed over a billion dollars and then still be able to come back and, and do music? You know, it's just the, the fact of being able to have that balance there's not many people that can do that. And I'm just, man, I'm so I, I'm so thankful because I see what a lot of artists go through. If they take a break in music and don't have anything else, then it can lead to a lot of other bad things. And I'm just like, man, I've, I've done something right in this lifetime to be able to afford this luxury. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, I think uh, so you're in the middle of writing now. Is that what's happening or in the middle of making yeah. new music? Yeah, I keep saying it to everybody, like, I'm coming out with music this year, I'm coming out with music this year, there's a big announcement, and I am 100% towards either the end of this year, because I after fast, or the beginning of next year, 100% coming out with music. And what can we expect? That's the thing, I, I, I don't want to give it away. I'm, I'm in the beginning stages of finding everything that we just spoke about. Okay. In terms of what, but I still have to satisfy the core ludicrous audience of still being me but also give something new. Otherwise, it, it would be time for me to start thinking about there's no reason to do this, but I am excited and I am uh, motivated because I think I've found something. What do you love most? Like, what do you love doing most? Yeah, for me, it would be music. Um, not to say that I don't love doing movies, but unless you're like Tyler Perry where you're the writer, director, actor, everything, music is one of those things where you have a complete blank canvas and you, you have to create the entire picture um with movies it's kind of like you're just playing one part somebody might have wrote it somebody else is directing somebody is producing and you kind of are just playing this role now that's not to say take away from this craft because acting and embodying something is very very you know um artistic as well but I, if you're asking me my personal opinion music is like i've created something from absolutely nothing it came out of thin air and this is what happened yeah. Well, also it has, um, I mean, there are some movies that will ha have lasting impact, but most movies we just forget, like kind of, unfortunately they come and they go, but music continue, like you actually physically move our bodies. <laughs> There's something that's just very different. That's why musicians have always had it, had it more than anybody else. Every actor wishes they were a musician. I'm glad you said that because I was going to say <clears throat> me being able to satisfy my curiosity and see these guys that I personally know that are making 20 million and above on every film, which is more money than we're making. And deep down, they really just want to be rock stars. Yep. That lets me know that uh, being a rap star, rock star, entertainment, music entertainer has to be the number one sought out job in the world, yep, period. It absolutely and you know, and is. Do you know why that is? I want to ask you okay. if you know why that is. Why they all want that? Yes. 
Um, this is a good question for you. You've been asking me good questions. Okay. And there is a right answer. Well, I know that even like NBA stars, I mean, I remember yep. Ron Artest had his little music career at some point too. Like everybody yep. wants to be a rock star. I use the word musician, but the n- words I usually use is rock star. Um, I think, I think it's that, I think you can capture someone's complete body and like in, in that song, like there's just something that's so captivating and everyone's staring at you on stage. Everyone is staring at you. You command <laughs> everyone. And, and it's like, like, um, it's like a dance. Like you can, you can move them like puppets. Like it's, it's kind of like a, an intense experience between a musician on stage and an audience. And, you know, there are different th- things like in wrestling, I feel like you get a little bit of that because you're the center of attention and all these eyes are on you, but you're not moving them like music moves them. So that's why they always have the. the Okay. So you, you answered the question in the correct way. And I'm going to say something and I'm going to say one word that basically described you answering it correctly. And for me, the answer of why everyone, even movie stars want to be rock stars, is the word freedom. You have the ultimate freedom. Basketball players have to show up at a certain time. You still like school. No matter how much money you make, you got to, you know, you got to come to practice. You got to show up at this time for this game. You got to do this. There's protocols in place. For a movie star, you still got to show up to set at a certain time. You got to do this. These are your dates. This is when you have to do this. A rock star, we can do whatever the fuck we want to. (laughs) Whenever the fuck we want to. Yeah. We have no rules, no regulations. So we can even show up to concerts late and we still can pretty much do what we want to. It happens. You're so, totally in charge. Totally in charge of your of your entire existence. I should have been a musician. I mean, that's why I'm kind of doing my thing. I can be late to this too. <laughs> I cannot show up too. I can do actually I can do whatever I want because in my chart, um, Chris, it says that freedom is my number one value. Uh, I, I need to be free. Well, luckily he's cool. Cause it's been, um, gosh, is it 25 years? <laughs> a long time. Yeah. For 25 <laughs> years he's had to, well, we didn't get married till like a couple years ago because of that. I was just like, I don't uh, want someone to own me. I don't want someone to like <laughs> a, a ring. I'm never wearing a ring. And then someone owns me. Like I had such all these weird things around it and I didn't understand why. And I thought I was just strange. But then when I had someone tell me about my chart, they're like, oh, no, no, kids. <laughs> this latest lady said, if you want kids, your husband better know he has to do everything. And I said, well, thank God he already does. He used to say, Chris, when we used to think I was going to carry them, now we're going to have a surrogate. He's like, Maria, you're just going to hike them to me. And I got it. Like, this is all my thing. I got it. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Yo, this is hilarious, man. This is hilarious. I promise. Yeah. So, um, now the surrogate will hike them to him and I'll be like, peace. I'm going on vacation. <laughs> that was very intense for me. <laughs> Yo. And you know what? So, so it's funny. So like the craziest thing about all the other rappers, they think that being a movie star is better. It's like, we always want what we, what yep. we can't have, but they look at it as there's this mystery of how much someone gets paid for a movie. And they're not all the way wrong, but sometimes they, they're they incorrect that that is the ultimate thing. Everyone, all, all, anyone from the rap community is like, yeah, man, that movie money is different than that rap money. So they all have this perception that you're making millions, buku, way more than you would ever make in rap. Yeah. And it's like the ultimate great. So it's it, <laughs> that's why I say I feel like I'm the luckiest guy ever. Well, yeah, because you, you straddle both worlds really well. You can do <laughs> it all. And... You are so freaking priceless. You and Tyrese together in the Fast franchise are everything. That's why I remember having that conversation with you after the premiere. I was like, you guys can do no wrong. Like, it's just too good. <laughs> and there's so much intensity that, like, I I need more of you guys when I'm watching that movie. And that's why it's so well done, because they give you just enough and they leave you wanting more. I love that. Yeah, man, I... I I'm so happy because we've never been killed off. And I think I've told you that before. There are a lot of people that die. Not to say that they don't also come back, but I'm glad to keep the uh, consistency of just being alive. Yeah. Well, I don't think Ben would ever let you die. 
<laughs> He's got you. Okay, you have it. Yeah. That's good to know. He, Especially since our daughters are best friends. He can't he can't kill me off. No, no. I don't think that would ever, ever cross his mind. <laughs> He's the one who makes sure he keeps everybody together. And uh and and that's the beauty of it all. So um you guys won so many awards for this. Um, this show Karma, you said three NAACP award nominations. Um, what are your goals for this season? My goals for this season are continuing to expand the fan base. We have even more storylines, like there's one called Karma for President, and it's just teaching kids about, you know, have, having authority and that you can't necessarily please everyone, but to continue to stay to your true self. Um, so I, I think that since every single episode has this theme, I'm just wanting to reinforce the positive change that it tells kids that you're, you're never too young to make positive change and do things in a, in, in a manner that is going to have a butterfly effect on your own neighborhood. And it starts in your neighborhood and then expands out. So for me, just expanding the audience. So everyone out there, if you have not seen Karma's World on Netflix season one, then now you have to watch season one and season two. And I promise you it's a game changer. My goal is for karma to be bigger than Ludacris has ever been worldwide. And I feel like we are slowly on that track to making it happen. Wow. Well, Luda doesn't have a doll. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I had like a bobblehead, but it's nothing in the sense of what's going on here. And there are so many other exciting things happening. You see, it just brings joy to my heart and my, and my face. But we, by the time me and you talk again for Fast 10, we're going to have a lot more to talk about when it comes to Karma's world as well. And I cannot wait. Give this a year. <laughs> so exciting. Um, yeah. Do you have anything you want to talk about with your foundation? Oh, man. I mean, I can always talk about my foundation. You know, this is just people can go to ludicrousfoundation.org and you can see all the, the great things that we're doing. And I mean, that's my goal, man. I, when we talk about legacy and we're talking about karma and giving back to the world, I feel like we're all interconnected. And when it's time for us to leave this <laughs> physical body of ours, it's all going to come down to how many human beings we touched in a positive way. Um, mm. So, you know, make sure that you're aware of that. And today you can change the trajectory and make it even better than it was yesterday. And that's what the Ludacris Foundation is all about. I love that. What do, what do you believe happens after we go? That's a great question. I've been telling all of my friends this, and this is very important. I don't even think it. I know it. Don't ask me how I know it. But definitively, when you, as soon as you leave this physical body, you're going to sit with the all overall judge, most high and mighty. And you're going to watch a highlight reel of your life. This highlight reel is going to consist of things that you did in a bad manner that affected people in a bad way. And it's also going to be how you affect the people in a good way, because as human beings, we are only able to see how we affect them as we're in their presence. But you don't realize what happens when they leave your presence and how that butterfly affects everyone else. So you're going to watch this highlight reel. The more you do for people, the more emotional you're going to be in a great way and crying and just in just so much awe. Same thing as if you've done bad things, you're going to be in a different type of emotion. But the more good things you do, the longer your highlight reel is to the point where you spontaneously combust after spontaneously combusting. <laughs> but keep that in mind in that it can be as, as just giving someone a compliment, telling them their hair looks nice while you're passing them on the street. I'm not even talking about giving money away. And you may, they may be having a bad day, as we always know. You never know what people are going through. Just understand that we are here to affect people in the interconnectedness of human beings in a positive way. And you, we all don't realize our power in being able to do that. So that's what's going to happen when we leave this physical <clears throat> earth. So how is your highlight reel looking today? And live every day to add to that highlight reel so that you can add more goodness to it. I love that. You know that there was... Um a scientific report that came out recently where they accidentally stumbled across that very fact because they were yeah. studying a man's brain. So he was all hooked up and I think it was for Alzheimer's or something, dementia. And he had a heart yeah. attack, I think, and died while they was attached to these things. And they saw his whole life flash before his eyes. So it's actually true. Wow. You see the highlight reel of your life. And I've interviewed people who 
have died and come back. And she said, Anita Morjani, she said, all I can say was like a tapestry, a giant tapestry where you see everything that happened in your life. So you're right. Woo! Wow. Yeah. So it's been scientifically proven. And there, there are other go. people who have passed who have seen all of this. So... I love it, man. Great, great times. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Chris, thank you. Um, Love chatting with you. Love everything that you're doing and all the good that you're spreading in this world. We need more of it and more of it and more of it. And I will see you very soon, I'm sure, for Fast 10. And um, congrats on everything and my love to the family. And uh, we'll see you soon. Same to yours. Soon. Um, All right, Queens. I friggin' love Luda. I love him too. I love that he is not afraid to to go there, right? Because like I was just presenting <laughs> yes. the question, knowing yes. that I didn't want to be rude or anything. Um, but I mean, some of his fav- my favorite songs, like "Move, Bitch, Get Out mm-hmm. the Way," um, or I got hose in different area codes, and of course, I just start getting so excited when I hear the songs. <laughs> yeah the words of his songs coming out of his mouth live and in person because I'm such a fan, but, but it's true. And I, and what I like about that is it just shows that we evolve and we're not the same people, but we don't have to go back and hate someone for where they were back then. We're just, we're in a very unforgiving time in this world, but, um, but look at like where he's evolving and where he's going and all the great that he's doing. So I thought it was pretty cool. He just has such an, honest and open mindset too Mm -hmm. with everything like you can just tell everything that's coming out of his mouth like like you said he's not gonna hate on his on this that or this he's like no that all made me where Mm -hmm. i am now and all made the current luda and i'm gonna go on and be a different luda again so i think that that's like i feel like every person we talk to who's successful has this awareness they're evolved Mm -hmm. and even you look at him you hear from him and you're like dang you are just on such a level yeah. like you vibe so high he's really amazing and his afro did look phenomenal yep i his, love his, love <laughs> love him we've always had such great chats he's um, so fun and he pulled me aside after the premiere he's like okay i know that you will be honest with me i'm like of course and so we had this whole conversation but um Wait, but what did he ask you about i can't say it's private ah! Come on. Can't say. What a tease. He wanted me to, he wanted to know what I thought of the movie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I liked I liked that he um quickly answered your what's your sign question. Oh yeah. I was like, mm, our guy. Our guy. I love how he ended the episode. What a great way to go out. Think about how you want your reel to look like. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really great way for us to to think about how to live our lives every single day. What do we want that real? And if we had some bad moments, hey, we're human. Right. We made some mistakes. Let's try to overwhelm the real with positive so yeah. that that is such a little teeny fraction. Mm-hmm. And I cannot wait for new music. Oh, my God. Right? Meredith is going to die. <laughs> I didn't even tell her I had him on the show today. I love him. But she is going to die. So, friends... Thank you for being with us. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do. Uh, check us out, mariamenunos.com. You can do all the things there. You can subscribe. You can you know, join our, our newsletter. We have amazing weekly newsletters going out, and we're adding a lot of free gifts in there. Just saying. Um, and we are updating our shop page on the website so you'll be able to shop easier. I'm very excited about this. I was um, actually trying to go on there myself because I realized... I don't use my own links to things. And so I went to shop and it was like very arduous. And I said, oh yeah, this doesn't really work. We need to fix this. But you know what? Everything has to like have its moment. Evolve. You got to get it up and then you make improvements. And that's why I love Priscilla at Forward Female because she, every week we have our meetings and she's like, okay, how can we upgrade? How can we get better? And so I love that mentality and um, and that's what we're doing. So friends, We will see you right back here tomorrow. Be nice people, make good choices, and be present.